Hello guys, it's been a while. I know I haven't posted in a few good months, but that is for good reasons. The business has been really busy, to be honest, in the last few months, especially in the summertime. I could not keep up with posting on Instagram, doing all sorts. But now, obviously, we t- we're getting to winter time, still got a bit of work. As always, just it's not as busy as it would be in the summertime, you know? So I have a bit more time, more freedom to post, record, and show you guys what we are about and what we do and how to do certain things. So, fucking birds, mate. Honestly, birds, just fuck off. So as you can see in the intro this week, we have Michael Smith, Sirocco, in for all the polishing work, ceramic coating, just making it looking fresh. The reason why he's coming in to do this sort of work is because he's looking at selling the vehicle. Michael Smith does videos on it. He has done pretty much all the mods and certain things you can do to the car. He's even got Audi wheels on it, as you can see here, which in fact, what we're going to do on those, we're not going to get a refurb so he doesn't spend a lot of money on it, you know, on the car that he's selling because there's no point and the wheels are not even that bad. We're just going to do like a polish on them, which I'll show you guys how to do later. And pretty much on the paintwork, we'll, we'll be doing a two-stage correction and a ceramic cone to the paint and like a nice clean overall everywhere inside out. We were meant to do just a one stage on the paint. Here are the results of the one stage correction. It done a very good job, but there's a few certain staining on the um, on the bonnet and on the roof on the top areas of the car, which I'll just show you right here. So this is the 50-50 that we sent over to Michael and we were like, look, like, done an amazing job removing the saw marks the only issue is there's still like a little bit of etching left here and there you can see it see that see that yeah it's hard to see but that's why two stage will get more out and also guys make sure to subscribe to michael smith he done so many things on this car that you need to watch but he's going to sell it soon after we are pretty much all done on it he's going to list it up and he's going to get a new car i'm not going to say what car it's going to be but it's quite interesting so I'll definitely subscribe. He's a lovely guy. He is the definition of a sweetheart. There's the definition. <laughs> anyway, let me show you around the car, show you guys what we're working with, a few things that we're going to do to it, and uh, what we can improve and what we can't, and just overall transformation of the vehicle. Right, let me show you guys the condition of the paint on the bonnet. See those staining? It's very hard to see under the camera, but see them like spots everywhere. Yeah, that is pretty much across the whole car, mainly on the upper areas. So we've done like a 50-50 here. Um, see how there's no staining here and there is, there's hard to see. But yeah, I'll get it under the light now. So pretty much see how there's no saw marks and there's saw marks and imperfections here. So this is the 50-50 that we sent over to Michael and we were like, look, like done an amazing job removing the saw marks. The only issue is there's still like a little bit of etching left here and there. You can see it. See that? See that? Yeah, it's hard to see, but that's why two stage will get more out. One stage done an amazing job. One stage we used Car Pro Ultra Cut. Car Pro Ultra Cut. I know it's a heavy cut, but we combine it. Using, we combine it using a rupees machine, orbital, and a, a rupees yellow fine pad not fine but a like medium sort of hardness the reason why we use ultra car in that combination is because on vw's paint they're quite hard especially of this age you you pretty much most of new cars have horrible soft paint so it's easier to remove the scratches but it's obviously easier to scratch whereas with that we need to a bit more abrasion to even do a decent job on a one stage you know so even i know it's a heavy cut but it doesn't leave any holograms and it still leaves a nice shine afterwards, especially on a hard vehicle's paint like this. But we need to get a bit more deeper into the paint. So we're going to use Ultra Cut, Car Pro Ultra Cut, and uh, we're going to use Meguiar's Heavy Cut um, Pad, the, or the microfiber ones. All of the stuff we use and everything is going to be in the description below so you can have a look. But anyway, let's show you the rest. Moving around the vehicle on the side, it's especially you can see the deeper scratches it's got on it, especially with that light in a unit. There you can see a bit better. I'll get the I'll get the inspection light on it right now. And yeah, look at that. It's quite bad it actually, to be honest. It's probably the worst air in the car. I'm guessing the cars went for like a bush somewhere, you know, at some point. 
but this paint color is beautiful though when we are done on it it's gonna look insane yeah look at all these scratches here it's quite bad same it on the door side there's like some weird effects there and yeah look at all these scratches that we're going to be removing there's a little bit of holograms and such on the rear end as well i know the bootless has been resprayed at some point so it might be from that but we'll easily sort it out there's a bit deeper uh, deeper scratches up here you can see but yeah it's not too bad two stage we're definitely doing an amazing job on this also if you're not familiar with what two stage is it means the first stage of the cutting so machine polishing on the paint uses a very aggressive compound at like the ultra cut and a aggressive pad and majority of the time it doesn't but in a heavy cut leaves sort of like a haze effect on the paint so it removes the scratches but it doesn't give that proper shine that's why after we do the heavy cut we do a dueling stage on the paint that jewels up the paint and just makes it really really shiny so the combination of that is basically a softer pad and a softer more polishing side um, compound so makes it more polished <laughs> that's explained basically more shiny so yeah that's the combination of the two stage just like this so keep heating it up keep prying it up you can see slowly getting there badges removal is usually quite an easy thing to do but just because of this crevice inside here it's very very hard to do you know if it's like a simple badge or it's just flat literally you have to heat it up quickly you don't have to put any tape around or just get a fishing line and just work in you know this one's a bit you can see a bit more bit harder to do maybe that's why michael asked us to remove it for him <laughs> but yeah hey we're nearly done there you go look at that off these bits you can heat up or just like peel up if you can easily let me get my hot gun to make it easier this plastic blade won't scratch deeply into the paint it might just scrape a little bit on the surface but that's why we do this now before we do any of the main polishing work you know so any fine scratches caused from that then we can easily remove Right, so right, so the badge is off, there's a little bit of dirt and glue still on it. What I'm gonna do is just spray a bit of tar remover on it, just let it sit for a little bit and just wipe it down. And that's another thing why we do this before we do any of the main polishing work, you know. Realistically, I should have done this outside, I just didn't have much time to do and then in the decontamination stage, this glue can be removed very easily. You know, we're like now. I'm just going to get a bit of oil spray over the car, but that's not a problem. We'll just wipe this down after. Not a problem at all. Then after it sits for a little bit, you can just wipe it off. You might have to do it a few times, but yeah. So now we can remove the tape all around. This is still not dirty, just stained, but in the polishing work, there's a little bit here in the edge, which I'll remove now. There's a little bit like staining and stuff on it, you know, it's been removed a few times this badge because it was obviously changed over to carbon fiber. But um, any of the staining, any of the marks, we'll see what we can do on the polishing stage. We can definitely get this better. And uh, yeah, anyway, what I'm gonna do now is remove the rear badge, pretty much the same concept. Right, so the badges at the front and at the rear off the eyelids are also off. 
it's easier to do with a badge and that sort of stuff first because then in the machine polishing process you can polish around you know in the badge area without worrying damaging the badge and also below the badge it always leaves a bit of the staining as well so it's easy to remove with you know when the badge is not there so for the machine polishing now we now we will be doing a two-stage correction so that includes a heavy cut and then a dueling stage after i'm just going to show the dueling not the dueling stage the heavy cut stage right now and what we're going to be using so the main machine we're going to be using is rupees bigfoot mark three with a heavy cut pad on it so this is a wall pad i know earlier i mentioned i'll be probably using emma Guire's microfiber cutting pad they're very both very similar you know it all depends on the paintwork conditions and what paintwork hardness softness or whatever it is but generally the same thing and the reason why i just picked this one up because that was the one on the closer one i saw so honestly it doesn't make a big of a difference and for the compound like i said earlier we're going to be using ultra cut i don't even get that up ultra cut heavy cut gives amazing results without leaving any holograms effects uh, so yeah, I just accidentally hit the camera, so apologies. And then, oh, and for the little details, I'm gonna be using Ru uh, Flex Machine. So it's a much smaller pad, as you can see on the difference. You know, so this one is cordless, so it's a lot easier to get like certain areas and stuff, and it's quite powerful for how small it is. This stuff is honestly incredible. A lot of details are obviously, you know, cheap and stuff which is fair enough. They just use a big one everywhere. You know, we want to go above and beyond, just use the little details one as well. Because, you know, it needs to be polished everywhere, not just, we don't cut corners basically. Anyway, let's get started. So these are the holograms. If you haven't seen it before, this is how they look. So see how like the light hits. You can see it on the corners of the light when it hits it. So like not straight up. Straight up is not this looks flawless. Look at that, amazing. Nothing, you know. And then you move out close and then so like let's say in the sun, if this car went out in the sun right now, here looks amazing. But if it goes in the sun, then you can really see the holograms and stuff. That's where a lot of cheap car washes are like cheap detailers they do that one stage cool heavy cut it looks awesome but then there's bloody holograms everywhere we need to do the dueling stage after the heavy cutting but as you can see the bottom looks amazing it looks awesome a lot better than i expected to be honest literally like 90 probably 95 percent of the imperfections have been removed which is outstanding for a two stage correction of this age so compared how bad it was and uh well now i've got the rest to do it's quite boring obviously you guys just see me machine polish because it makes a lot of noise it's probably not very entertaining so what i'm going to do is pretty much work for most of the car i'll show that that doors that rear end um probably on camera as well because the scratches are quite bad so we can see how much we can get oh, thank you for the noise so you can see how much of the scratches we can remove those probably 80% of those will be able to remove a two stage, you know, even with a multi stage, it might not be enough. Um, you might have to get sanding down and such. So, anyway, let's get cracking. Right, so it's the next morning. I just finished polishing the 50-50 on the rear quarter panel on the left-hand side. Sorry, English not very good today. The next day morning, I just finished polishing the rear 50-50 shot because uh, that is where the deepest scratches pretty much on the car was. And uh, honestly, 90% of those scratches have been removed. There is a few still deep ones left. 
uh, they would need a multi-stage for it. Maybe some, some of them want it sanding down and some are impossible to remove, but it looks very, very good. I'll show you guys now. So here's the 50-50 of the heavy cut. And you can see like this is the hardest compound we use and this hard VW paint is still, you can still see the scratches here, you know, but not as bad as is here. Obviously the dual stage will get a little bit more out, a little bit on the top of those more. But yeah, that is pretty much what we are working with. I think you can see it better without the light. Well, only using the lights that we have like in the unit. So those lights are like more like a daylight sort of light, you know? You can see it, look at the difference here where the tape was. It also shows how much the gloss has improved on this car and the paint really just pops more. Obviously after lifting this Sirocco, the light hits it differently on the car, so we can even see more imperfections out on it. Especially like here on the light, you can see like those scratches there and like haziness. We'll be polishing that off, see that there, not very nice. Also, when we walk down to the rear, it still comes back to those other scratches that were hit earlier, but you can see they are much more deeper in the lower areas. Hard, hard to see, look at that. You can see those here sort of catches on the nail a little bit, some of them, but not too bad. It's just, the light hits it right on it now, so we can even see more. That's why it's good to lift the car in the air and then we can even see more perfections that we need to sort out. This won't be 100%, but the improvement on it will be. So I just got to the rear, I finished that side pretty much heavy cutting. Now we are working on the rear. So I've noticed even a few more, I think I showed this earlier, but you can even see it more now, the deeper scratches here on the rear side. It must've been like lightly scraped at some point. And usually the number plate, I would take this off, but the owner, like I just said to me, just leave it on there, he'll, he'll do that himself. 
because uh, when I take off, it's just obviously I can polish around a lot easier using the machine. Uh, you can see a lot of like staining, all of this on these edges and up here and around, just here on the edge, I would have to do it all by hand, which is fine, just takes a bit longer and you can't get as good as results as using the machine, obviously, because hand doesn't have a lot of mm, power. Then there's this odd angle here as well. Very, very odd, it's like a centimeter, two centimeters wide. Um, that will have to do by hand as well. You can see the staining all across here, pretty much just that angle there by hand. And where the lights reflectors are here just as well, this by hand as well. And um, this bit by hand as well. So pretty much most of the rear end has to be done by hand, apart from these bigger, bigger scratches here. These won't improve much, but we can see what we can do, obviously. Let's get started. I just need to bend over for this one to talk to you guys quickly. I polished the rear. I'm gonna wipe it down now. We're gonna see what we're working with. Most likely, the areas that are done the hand polishing pool will need um, a bit more work. So I'll go over those again, to be honest. Shouldn't, but uh, we're just perfectionists, you know? We just wanna see what we can do the best, to be honest, just so it looks good. It is obviously a two-stage correction, so I should be only doing it twice. But uh, sometimes on bits, like if it looks very bad, we just oh, we have to sort out, you know. So like the deeper scratch that was here, um, that would need a bit more later on as well. But I don't think that can get any better, to be honest, because it is quite bad. But not to the point where it's very visible. Only up high when the light is hitting right on it, you know. So this is how it's looking after we wiped it off compound see those deeper scratches that i thought pretty much they won't come out yeah still there fortunately um it's even up here and a little bit under you can see that mark there um but honestly pretty much when the car is lower you can't see this because like look you, you, you're looking at it from this angle you can't see anything it's only when you're really looking for it you know lower down so yeah it's not too bad to be honest uh then missed a little bit too wide there but um remember that corner bit here that looks pretty much a lot better now maybe a little bit once over with a hand polish that we need it and um this bit these bits will need a bit more work on the edges there and um just upper and on the top bit but it's looking a lot better than it was before so it needs a bit more hand polishing though and there's a bit compounding now which i'll sort out there it's not a problem um, there's obviously like a paint issue here though and like this this staining staining from the first probably number plate that was on it uh, here obviously just issue with the paint because um, so this is a short number plate that's where you see the screw holes if it was up to here then you wouldn't see that but that's why it's there because of the first number plate well yeah it looks a lot better than it was obviously the jeweling stage is going to add more shine anyway but so far looking good time to finish off the rest and I'll probably be back when I start doing the jeweling stage because there's only that door site to do and a few minor hand touches here and there. Heavy cutting has been done on the Sirocco. Now, obviously I still got the jeweling stage to do on the paintwork. Looking good so far. It's gonna add, add a bit more gloss up to the jeweling stage. But the wheels, when you decide the wheels as well, as you can see, um, obviously deep cleaned all the arches and stuff outside. They just need a bit more I'm going after and then after I dress them nicely, we get spider webs. Usually um, we do the wheels off, ceramic coating of the wheels, deep cleaning. So we ceramic coat the arches, but obviously the customer, Michael, he doesn't want to spend a crazy amount of money. So we're not taking the wheels off fully and the wheels originally, he might have got them refurbed, but it's quite expensive to do them because the diamond cut. So that'd be like 500 pounds pretty much to get them all done, which is a bit pointless because it's not even that bad. They just have these like, you see it like stains a little bit, you can see on the camera, a bit of staining, that 
is very hard to wash off, but I've tested and we are able to machine polish them off. Well, at least make them look a lot better than they are. So we're going to do that now. The inner barrels are quite, quite rough, quite bad. Touch them up what we can, but um, they won't get pretty much any better. That is the, the reason why the barrels are like that is because they never been ceramic coated. If they were ceramic coated from the start and maintained, you know, quite well and re ceramic coated pretty much every year, because that's on average how long the wheel ceramic coat lasts for, then that wouldn't happen. But unfortunately, all the brake dust has really got to the thingy. Might be able to take them off and like clay by them and such to improve them, but realistically they would need a refill to get the inner barrels better but they're not honestly that bad there's no point of doing it so that's why we're just going to machine polish them and ceramic coat them after so i just sprayed the tar remover on the wheel because i noticed there's a few spots here and there of tar and the reason i sprayed on the tire as well because when you wipe it off it cleans the tire really really well for the dressing for the tire to go on after we are all done already so first, we're going to remove all the tar spots, wipe that off the best we can, and then we're going to IPA wipe it so it removes any of the residue left. Then we can machine, polish, um, anything that we can on the wheel. There's actually quite a lot of them, look at that, they're showing up. And uh, there's also a few tar spots on the arches as well that we're just going to take care of. All the wheels have been, as you can see, deep cleaned, basically tar spots removed. This is what we are working on, like this weird sort of staining on them. We'll see what we can do with it. Polishing will definitely help, but if we can get 100%, we'll see. I'll show the other ones now. So the front ones seem to be worse, as you can see here. Uh, let me show you the other side, so things are a bit worse. It really depends just how the light hits the wheel, you know. This is the driver's side front. Yeah, it's not too bad actually. I'm gonna start off on the passenger side rear because this one's probably the worst one. So we can see what we can do with this one. Just machine polish the best we can. Nothing crazy, not gonna spend crazy amount of time on it, but just quickly on the bigger areas, you know. So I just polished the rear wheel. This is not tar, this is just scratch. Leave my hands alone, I hate using gloves. Anyway, so look at that, it looks a lot better. Like I'm quite impressed to be honest. I wouldn't, I never thought it would be this good. Then all we have to do is just like now wipe it down with IPA and then we're gonna ceramic coat it after I do all the wheels. So yeah, let's get cracking with the other ones. So I just went around the whole car, polished up all the wheels and they're looking million million times better obviously these are like the curb marks that would have been refurbed if they went in for refurb but without doing that doing just a nice polish on them look they are looking a lot better this is how the rear is looking look at that they look brand new the rear ones because they haven't got any curb marks anyway but yeah they're a lot better what we're going to do now is we're going to ceramic coat all of the wheels and uh, yeah i'll just show you the process of that now so first before applying any protection any sort of ceramic coating we need to wipe down the surface using an IPA wipe. What it really does is just remove any like, final compounds that is left on it and just sort of preps the surface for the ceramic coating to bond properly. Because if you have, let's say, a bit of compound left, a bit of, I don't know, anything else, you know, then it's just not going to bond adhere to the uh, paint correctly. So I'm just going to go around the car now and just pretty much IPA wipe every little detail that I can.
I've got the G-Technic C5 right here, so this is what we use on the wheels. I literally, these are very simple to do. The most annoying wheels probably we've done so far, the new M3 wheels, they're horrendous to do. So many spokes, these are quite simple to be honest, they're not gonna take much time. So I just pulled some on my applicator and literally just gonna to touch all the spokes. These are very simple to do, so the whole wheel can be covered in one, it's not an issue. Is it, it will, the applicator will touch the tire, so it's gonna get like this sort of black staining, but it's fine. That's not an issue. Literally, just work around. And yeah, it's quite simple. It's gonna look like it's glossy now. Obviously, the wheels are a bit more matte. Well, they were even more matte before the polishing, but unfortunately, when you do a polish on the sort of matte satin wheels, then you're just gonna add a bit more gloss to them, you know? But this ceramic coating, it doesn't add any gloss. It just makes the wheel, obviously, protected and it doesn't, so let's say the wheels are matte or satin, it doesn't add any more gloss basically, so it's not an issue. Literally just work on the whole wheel and just wait a little bit. So we wipe it off. So here it is, the whole wheel has been ceramic coated. You can wait a little bit, you know, you don't really have to. It doesn't really say you have to, but I like to wait a little bit just so it, you know, sits here and a little bit longer, not to the point where it hardens up, you know, in the wheel and um, it's hard to remove it, but pretty much a few seconds you know, after, you can just start buffing it off. It's very easy to buff off. Doesn't give any struggles at all. It's not like some ceramic coatings that I use in the paint that are horrible, horrible to use. The wheels ones are a lot easier. And the towel that we're using, it is a used towel, but it's quite a nice used towel. So it's been obviously washed a few times in the wash and now we can use it for the wheels, for example. These are sort of like wheel that you can't see the scratches or saw marks. So it so a used towel is not gonna do that, but let's say if it was on a wheel that has like let's say it's a gloss black, for example, then those scratch really easily. So we would use a brand new towel, really. The same thing on the paintwork, we only use new towels when we apply ceramic coat on the paint, just to make sure we do a good job when we wipe off the ceramic coating and it doesn't cause any any little fine scratches you know because that can happen especially on new cars because the paint is crazy crazy soft so wipes down the first and flip it over any final you can feel it's a lot smoother to touch as well and yeah so now i'm just going to repeat the whole thing around then i'm going to put the covers back on the wheels i'm not going to coat the i'm not going to dress the tires just yet because I don't want to see this little edge here. I use, I, we were stressed out as well, so I want to make sure the, the, the ceramic cone adheres to it correctly and then it dries overnight and then tomorrow we can dress the tires as well, just before the customer comes for the car. Another thing is we like to cover the wheels because we've still got one more uh, polishing, like for the stage to do on the paint. So any dust or so of that, because a little bit of dust is created when you polish. It's not going to go on the wheel, so they won't get that really. So we're just going to cover them up after. Okay, so we are back at a different angle right now. The car's been lowered. I dueled stage, so that is the second stage after the main cutting phase. I dual stage pretty much all the lower areas, all the doors and the topper areas, most of it as well. Just haven't done the bonnet yet. I've been waiting to show you guys how to do the dualing stage, which is how we do it really, because it's hard to explain absolutely everything how we do it polishing. In the future, I'm going to do a proper video like teaching you guys if you're interested how we do the machine polishing. But the basic stuff really is we have an orbital machine that, so we use the flex for this, you know, because it's it's a portable one, it's a battery powered one, so it's not as powerful as a cordless one, a cordless one. So we, but we don't need as much power in the dueling stage because it's only to remove the hologram, so it's a lot faster to do. And having a machine like this, you can quickly go around the car and still takes a bit of time, but a lot faster. Then we use a soft pad, so we use the rupees, the white pad, these are the softest pads that they do. Yeah, it's very soft. And then we use a, hold on, where is it? Let me get it. So we use uh, the Reflect Car Pro for the dueling stage. 
It's like super fine polish, basically. It still removes a little bit of imperfections and it adds the most amount of gloss you possibly can. So the reason why we use this after the heavy cut, as you saw earlier, I'm gonna show you guys again now in a sec, but after heavy cutting, it leaves like a hologram effect, sort of, these little like sort of fine scratches effect when the light hits it. So that is pretty much what the jeweling stage is for, is to remove that and it also boosts the gloss as well because sometimes when you heavy cut, majority of the times, it leaves a little haze effect on the panel. And with this stage, it sort of removes and it adds more gloss. So I'm gonna show you guys on the bonnet, like before and after. And yeah, let's get going because it's already 8 p.m. at night. It's been a long day, so if I look back, oh yeah, anyway. Been a long week as well, but we're getting there. We are getting there. I didn't fight that was the chair, by the way. Leave me alone. Bye. Hello. As you can see, this is the bonnet before. You see there's like little hologram effects when the light moves. Like here, if you're looking, let's say on the right hand side now, the screen like more to the middle right, you can see it, you know? So that is what the dueling stage will be removing. So yeah, let's go. This is the bonnet, how it's looking after the jeweling stage. Look at that, amazing. Now let's see it under the light. Look at that. Absolutely no imperfections, this is crazy. For a two stage, it's done an amazing job considering how bad the bonnet was. Look at the difference you see. After the jeweling stage and a full checkup of the car and IP wipe down, we start applying the ceramic cone that Michael decided to go with. So we used the G-Technic Crystal Serum Light with the combination of EXO. So pretty much if you look after the car very well and like let's say we top it up or you top it up on a regular basis, you know, this ceramic cone will last even up to five years, which is crazy amount of time. It's just a process of applying it, you know. There's two layers that goes on, it's just me doing one and just using brand new towels to wipe off the residue. Basically, what a ceramic cone is, is sort of, it bonds to the paintwork. It's not sort of like wax or anything where it washes off to the next wash. It will stay on the car for, even after you use, you know, harsh chemicals in the car. Even if you take it to a cheap car wash, it's not going to wash off. But it's not a thing that you should take it there because it will just downgrade the ceramic cone quicker, you know. It's not that it's going, it just downgrades it so it's not as hydrophobic. But then we can do a decontamination wash to sort it all out basically. But it protects against bird poo, drop-ins. Obviously the ease of maintenance is crazy improved. It doesn't get dirty as quickly. And UV protection so the colour stays as shiny as always. And it also adds a bit more gloss as well to the car. And there's so many, so many more factors that are just amazing things about the ceramic coating. Right guys, so today is the final day now. We showed you a few clips of Ceramico in the bonnet and such. We didn't film any more because we were really busy the last few days. So we need to crack on, you know, just so the quality stays as it should be. And uh, yeah, so it's the final day on the Ceramico. We've got Leon in the building here today. He's a bit camera shy, but hey. <laughs> uh, cool, so what I'm gonna do now is just show you a few clips around the car and how it's looking really, it looks, looks amazing. And Michael's pretty much on his way now, so he'll be here soon. You can see the eye bags on me, it's been a few hard days on it. But uh, yeah, the improvement on it is absolutely insane. 
a lot better than we expected, especially on the wheels and the paintwork, because uh, the deeper scratches on the bonnet and such and the stains were really, really odd. But as you'll see now in a few clips, it looks absolutely insane. now he's not happy with the work not, not good Aye, at all. honestly this is this is mind blowing seriously yeah, dude. Dude, mate, this is insane dude i've, I've honestly like Amazing. dude you have got you've got a touch mate Absolutely. leon as well it's leon hey, he's yeah, the guy. He's honestly, the guy. these guys are insane this thank is... you thank you so guys oh. make sure to subscribe to michael because oh, there's more more things coming with yeah. other cars, unless now he won't want to sell this because it looks too nice. That's the issue. <laughs> you put me in a spot, mate. <laughs> in a spot. Put me in a spot. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to end it here. And uh, yeah, stay tuned because Michael is going to post a few things about this as well, probably. Yeah. So. Um, if well, he might not even sell it now. That's the issue. But <laughs> hopefully, a new motor he'll get soon to start other projects on it and stuff. But yeah, take care, guys. Bye bye.